Hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome back to a slightly late episode of Fallout 4 Mods Weekly. Apologies, a couple days late, had a bit of a long weekend, but we are now back with some really cool mods, and we had a whole bunch of mods last week, and so we have some really nice options to take a look at. For starters, I suppose we should talk about the 6th Messenger's Thunder Gun mod. This mod is going to add in the Thunder Gun, which many of you will recognize from Call of Duty Zombies, a weapon that will fling enemies at immense speeds. It's essentially a huge can of compressed air that can all be expelled at once. This thing is super cool and a whole lot of fun to use. It was easily one of the funnest weapons in Call of Duty Zombies and now it is equally as much fun in Fallout 4. If you land a direct hit on any enemy with this thing, they will go flying and I mean flying. Some of these raiders I shot went out at Mach 10 and they were zooming. This thing seriously packs a punch, just like the original. But unlike the original Thunder Gun, this one can be customized at a weapon's workbench, so you can really tweak the damage. Do you want to shoot this thing continuously over and over again, but for the cost of less damage? Or do you want to expel it all for the highest damage possible, but you have to reload after every shot? It's really up to you. But if you fully upgrade this thing, you can get it to do some insane damage, especially with one of the unique variants. You can get this thing to almost a thousand damage per shot, and it's going to send the enemy flying. So it's really a little bit overkill. Now this weapon actually does have some pretty interesting integration into the world space. First of all, you can craft it, though it is going to cost you the combination of a missile launcher and the junk jet. So you'll have to sacrifice a unique weapon to get this thing. Or alternatively, you can just go purchase it over at a weapons vendor. Additionally, this weapon uses its own custom ammo type known as the Thunder Drum, also known as Thunder in a Can. And you can craft this thing, but it's going to cost you a mini nuke and a fusion core, so they are pretty expensive to make. Additionally, there are two legendary variants in the world, one of which is the Unrelenting Force, a little callback to Skyrim, as well as the Pack-a-Punch version of the Thunder Gun known as the Zeus Cannon. If you want to get your hands on these, small little spoiler warning, the Zeus Cannon can be found in the Warren Theater, and the Unrelenting Force can be purchased from Proctor Teigen at the Brotherhood of Steel airship. This weapon is definitely one of those that's just a whole lot of fun to use, but it is a tad bit overpowered. So if you're taking a very serious lore-friendly load order, maybe this isn't the mod for you. But if you're just looking to have some fun, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. And it's available for not only PC, but Xbox as well. So go check it out. It's a lot of fun. Now, moving away from fun, let's talk about some pain with the mod MAME, a difficulty overhaul by Eclix. This mod really helps to spice up the combat in Fallout 4, but it's not too crazy. It does add a lot of difficulty to the game, but it's not so overbearing that you practically find it unplayable. It's actually pretty balanced in my opinion. Now, there are a whole lot of features in this mod, so if you want to know absolutely everything, I do have a full breakdown of it on the channel already. I'll just go over some of the key points here as it took a lot of time to go over every single detail. Now, the main thing this mod is going to do is add in some new status effects into combat, such as bleeding and pain, and also new ways to cure those things in the form of a bunch of new aid items, as well as some replacements to a couple of the vanilla aid items. So if you have a broken limb, you're going to want to use something like a surgery kit or a splint. Jamming a stim pack in it isn't going to fix it anymore. Additionally, if you are bleeding, you're going to need to find some bandages, some sort of hemostat. You're definitely going to need to take care of that because it's a pretty nasty effect that will do some damage over time. But all of these effects can be applied to enemies as well. Additionally, there is now pain. If you want to cure pain, you're going to need some painkillers. But if you don't cure it, you're going to have some blurry vision. And overall, you're just not going to have a good time in combat. So really, it's something you want to take care of pretty often. Additionally, some of these status effects can lead to each other. For example, if you are really injured, you're bleeding, you have broken bones, and you use a surgery kit, it's going to fix all of those, but performing surgery on yourself is going to cause you some pain, and so now you're in pain, you're going to need to pop some painkillers as well. So it's a pretty interesting new overhaul to the medicine system. Additionally, now there are some pretty lethal headshots so that enemies won't be complete bullet sponges. So if you're fighting a humanoid enemy and they're not wearing a helmet, you're pretty much going to be one-shotting them. However, if they are wearing a helmet, they're actually going to have a little bit more protection. It's not going to be a standard damage resistance though, instead it's going to apply a percent chance. So depending on the caliber of your weapon or the weapon type, you have a higher chance of getting through the helmet's armor. For example, things like pistol calibers are going to have a hard time getting through helmets, whereas rifles are going to be much easier, and really heavy weapons like Gauss rifles will get through no matter what. Additionally, really heavy weapons like Gauss Rifles have a chance of entering Power Armor Helmets, so not even Power Armor is going to save you with this mod active. 
There's a lot of damage overhauls out there that change the way that damage works as well as add some different aid items. This is a really nice bang for your buck. You get a lot of changes like that and it works with a lot of other mods including things like ballistic overhauls which will add realistic ballistics as this mod uses mostly keywords to add all of its effects. I'm typically not a huge fan of the difficulty overhauls as they tend to touch a little bit too much, but I kind of like this one a lot. It does a lot of the changes that I try to mod into my own game, especially with those realistic headshots, and I think it does it in a very nice, balanced way. It's definitely up to you as to whether or not it fits into your load order, but I highly recommend trying it out and seeing if it does. It's a really cool one and definitely some great work by Eclix. The next mod we're going to be taking a look at is known as Infinite Armory by Kelkin. Now, Kelkin has released some Halo armor packs before, but this one's a bit special as it features some armors from Halo Infinite, as well as a couple armors from Halo 2 Anniversary. Specifically, you're going to get a highly customizable set of Marine armor, Marine pilot armor, some ODST armors, and even some officer uniforms from aboard some of their ships. All of these uniforms will be craftable at the new crafting station added to your workshop. So simply plop that thing down and you'll be able to start crafting some of these cool new uniforms. All of which are categorized into helmets, arm pieces, chest pieces, full on uniforms, backpacks, etc. And there are a ton of options. You can really customize all of these things. Not only are there a ton of base pieces of armor, they can be mixed and matched as they are all modular. And when you take them over to an armor workbench, they have a bunch of attachments and a lot of which are visual pieces. So for example, if you want to throw a holster onto your uniform, you could do that or a med pack or pouches, ammo, whatever it is, you can do that. And <laughs> it's super cool. Additionally, there are a bunch of skins for these armors, which I know a lot of people appreciate, so you can really customize this to suit either the environment that you've modded it in or just to pick the colors that you like. It really helps to add some more options to this, and there are already a ton of options as it is already. These are some really cool armors. It's obviously not a super lore-friendly mod, as it is literally porting in Halo armors, but they are still super cool. And if you're already using any of the other Halo mods that are out there by Kalkin or anybody else, then it's definitely worth picking this one up, as it adds even more variety. At this point now, you can have Spartans, ODSTs, Marines, just about everything, as well as Brutes and Elites to fight against, so you can really just turn Fallout into Halo at this point. We've kind of already toyed with that idea once before in a mod bundle, but this is definitely one I would add to that list if I could go back in time. All in all, just a really cool armor pack, definitely worth picking up if you're a fan of Halo, but if you want a lore friendly loader, maybe you should stick away from this one. Up next, we have a brand new weapon mod, and that's going to be the Makeshift Nail Gun by Pig. As part of Pig's attempt to add some brand new makeshift weapons into Fallout 4, this is going to be the newest addition that is going to shoot out railway spikes. Since the only thing that we have that does that in the vanilla game is the railway rifle, it's nice to have some new variety. And this one is pretty cool because it does have leveled list integration, so you will be able to find it out in the world. And this is one of the few weapon mods that's added to the railroad leveled list. So this is a pretty good dedicated railroad weapon. And it makes sense since it is using railway spikes. A nice little thematic tie in there. Now this is a weapon that is using compressed air to fire these railroad spikes, and it is pretty quiet using the sound effect, which is nice for those railroad agents since they are trying to be pretty sneaky most of the time. That being said, this weapon isn't designed with only railroad agents in mind. You can of course find this out in the world on other NPCs as well, and it just makes a really wonderful new scrap weapon. It's always nice to have more variety in the game, and something that utilizes those railroad spikes is definitely something that we needed. As you know, I want to make that mangler eventually, but this is something that will work in the meantime, and eventually you can have both for even more weapons that use railroad spikes. Pretty cool stuff and a fun new weapon by Pig. And then finally, we have the Capital Wasteland Outfit Pack Part 2 by the Fried Turkey and HCGX Grill. Now, if you remember the original Capital Wasteland Outfit Pack, it added a few armors from Fallout 3 into Fallout 4, and this mod's going to do the exact same thing. Except this time, there are way more options. There are so many outfits in this mod that I can't even show them all in this one segment. There are a ton of them. So I'm going to go ahead and show a few of my favorites rolling in the background, and I'll go ahead and tell you every single one included in this list. I'll just read through them really fast. So with this mod, you're going to get the bandana wearable on your forehead with both the white and red variants. You have the Brahmin skin outfit, the Chinese commando hat and jumpsuit, the winterized Chinese commando hat and jumpsuit. You have the recon armor and recon helmet, the outcast recon armor and helmet, the dirty pre-war business wear, scientist glasses, the iBot helmet, the grimy pre-war business wear, the lab technician outfit, leather armor, motorcycle helmet, motorcycle cop helmet, night vision goggles, the Oasis druid hood, the Oasis villager robes, and the regular Oasis robes, the party hat, 
the pre-war bonnet, the pre-war hat, the roving trader outfit and the roving trader hat, the storm chaser hat, the wasteland settler outfit, the wasteland scout hat, reading glasses, tinted reading glasses, good fight glasses, sunglasses, tortoise shell glasses, ball cap with glasses, pre-war baseball cap, blast off helmet, police hat, ragamuffin top hat, and a handful of unique outfits. In this you will also get the buttons wig, the Colonel Autumn uniform, General Chase's overcoat, Lincoln's hat, the Mechanist armor and Mechanist helmet, the Antagonizer armor and Antagonizer helmet, the Vault Boy watch, the pint sized slasher mask, and the US Army general overcoat. A whole bunch of stuff in this mod, and most of these outfits are added to the level list and can be found on different NPCs in the world and are purchasable from different armor vendors. But as for those unique outfits included in this mod, those are hidden in specific places, so you will have to go and actually find them. You won't see them spawning anywhere else. This is going to add a ton of variety into the NPCs you encounter and add a bunch of the classic outfits from Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. So this is definitely one that's worth picking up if you're a fan of the classic armors and outfits and you want more lore friendly alternatives for your NPCs to wear in game. It's a really good one and as usual, excellent work by the Fried Turkey and HCGX Grill. But with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As usual, big shout out to all of my patrons for supporting this channel. If you're interested in my Patreon, you can check it out. You get exclusive access to Discord roles, early access to my mods. For example, everybody who is signed up right now is using my SMMG already and doing a nice little test for me to work out all the kinks and bugs. And of course, you also get little sneak peeks that most people don't get until later. So it's completely optional, but it's there if you want it. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and you are amazing. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a rating, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace!